Okay guys, for this color combo on these bowls, um, I've done the gold, I've done the silver. I wanted to try something different. The other day I tried Cernet and I tried the, um, I think it's Hematite. This I didn't get really a major mica shift in. Now if I want to use Hematite, I'm going to have to play with this little, um, this color batch a little bit to see if I can get more of a shift in it. Maybe add some silver. Um, but I did a quick little batch of the, this is the Cernic Copper because I don't have a bunch of Primo in other tones other than silver and gold. So I'm going to use Cernic. Um, and here I just added a tiny bit of gold and a tiny bit of um, Alizarin Crimson. Okay, now I do want something deeper. And again, this is a tiny little batch, so it was really hard to slice. Um, but I think it's going to be strong enough to get a cool little pattern going in it. And yes, I sliced my finger the other day so you can see my fuzz from my band-aid. Um, so anyways, this is a two-ounce block of the Cernet or whatever their little packs are. This is the copper, so I'm going to use that color. Um... And I think just by the folds here, I think it's got a deep enough shift. Because with this one, if you like look at the dark side, it's really not much darker than the clay itself. So anyways, I think I'm going to add a little ball of gold to it. I mean, this is a, like if you look at my thumbnail, I don't really have anything to show you size-wise. Here's an eyeliner, a Bare Minerals eyeliner. Or here's a, oh, a nail polish, okay. Here's a nail polish top. It's about the size of a nail polish top. So a little ball. And then I'm going to add a little ball of alizarin crimson. So gold, alizarin crimson, a tiny little ball of black, and an even smaller ball of blue. The ultramar ultramarine. And that way maybe I can try to deepen the shadow areas or the mica shift areas a little bit. Get it a little bit away from this red more to a slightly different tone. I'm just playing. So play with it and have fun. Add little bits and see what you think. Um, in my little test batch right here that I did just did, I just added a little gold and a little alizarin, and I think it needs to be a little darker. So I'm going to add these this little amount to this whole batch because I don't want to change the color of it too much. I just want to change it a little bit. And honestly, this has a lot of gold undertone. I know the camera might not pick it up, but yeah, I'll add the gold because the gold does a really nice mic shift. The Primo gold, I'll add that too. So I'm going to mix this batch up, and when that's mixed up, uh, maybe I should keep a little bit of the pure so you can see that so we can see the difference. If it changes it too much, I don't want it to change it a lot. But you see when you roll it up there, you can see the this is the pure copper you can see the mica shift already just from rolling it and folding it weird we can see areas where the particles are laying flat and where they're not and that's what you're looking for like a nice difference in those particles whereas if I take like I said this hematite take a little of this let's roll this up you really can't I mean a little Bit right there but you really so this is not a good one on its own what if I just okay let's just do it one more time without adding oh, some different clays to it like maybe lightening it with some silver like seriously you really I can see a little bit right there all you can see is my fingerprints but a little bit right there So yeah, anyways, you can't really see a huge, whereas the silver, let me take a little batch of silver, and when I did the silver bowl, um, I added a little of the ultramarine, just like a little, like a ball like this, to a big batch of silver, a little bit of ultramarine, and you can see that has a nice strong mica shift too, right there, as well as gold, and you take a little batch of gold, this is Primo, Primo Silver, Primo Gold. And here you can see nice lines in it. So when you're testing a clay out, 
um, you can do that first to see if it's even good and then I just do little sample batches I'll add a little clay you know with a ball like this I'll add a little color to it and say okay I need a little more of this a little more of that just like I would mix oil paints okay so I'm gonna mix this up oh I wanted to keep some pure color there for you and I will be back and I'll show you the difference okay so here's my beginning one let me find the shift right there sorry this clay soft so I get fingerprints this is the one where I added what I showed you what I added so not too much difference so I think I'm gonna add and again I'm just playing here this is how I do most of my tutorials I work it out I play it out so I think I'm gonna add a little more black but I don't want to go too far too fast so wait where's my beginning okay this is trial this is original okay this is mica shift one or with color blend one okay so blend one original blend one I'm gonna take I don't want to go like I said I don't want to go too far too fast so I'm gonna slowly add color because I don't want to tint this thing I just want to change it a little bit so another little ball of black and I think I am gonna add some more blue and alizarin so let me grab that so let's see and I'm showing you each time and that way you know what I'm doing so right now I haven't made the bowl in the video or how I usually do it is I make the bowl base first and then do this but it's late and I feel like just making the pattern right now I don't feel like constructing a bowl tonight so in the video it's gonna be in the right order but right now it's not like I'm just doing this first I mean you could do this whenever you want and it's not that hard see I'm gonna watch my show and I'm gonna roll up little balls in this technique to get the veneer going and then I'll create the bowl later but usually I've made the bowl first so I think yeah I'm gonna add about three little balls um, so if we go by my here, let me get a color that you can see if we go by my nail polish that's the size balls I'm gonna add and they're maybe a tiny bit more black than these two but these two are about equal so I'm gonna add that I'm not gonna add any more gold because there's already a lot of gold in this in this guy there's already a huge gold undertone in this um, cernet but I wanted to I don't know not I just know the Primo has a really good gold mica shift. You can see the shift right here. Um, just by folding it, I can see how it's shifting a little bit. I, I wish on camera it looked like it. It looks more rust in real life, but on camera it's looking more orangey. So I'm gonna add these three and I'll mix them up and I will just keep gradually, I'll come back each time so you can see how much I'm adding, you know, to it. But play, play allow yourself to play and I know a lot of you are saying I'm allowing you to I'm helping you step out outside of the box and that's what I want learn to play it is okay to play just go slow each time because as long as you go slow like I'm just adding little bits I know I'm not gonna go too far if I had a huge big ball of black into this you know if I had a huge big ball of black and I take this sheet that's rolled out and I add that and that's a lot of clay and that's a lot of dark color and I may totally change my base color that I want to try to keep I'm just looking to tint it so by tinting it just like I would with paint you know I would just add a little bit of black to white to get gray not a whole bunch of black to white because then you're gonna change it to like a dark dark gray I just want to tint it a little bit okay just like when you see a mixed paint at the hardware store they put like one little drop of a color in into the white gallon and it's like it makes the whole thing a color or like when you're making colored eggs with the kids you put like two drops of food coloring in the whole thing the whole cup and it changes the whole thing so just add little bits at a time okay I'm gonna mix this up I'll be back okay so here's number three and I'm not looking for a huge difference so if this is one okay so one right here this is two 
Oh, my dogs are wrestling upstairs. Say, Mama's home. And that's three. It's getting a little deeper. I don't know if it, the camera picks it up, but I'm picking it up. But it's still not 100% where I want it yet. So, I think I'm going to add some of this hematite in. What if we add a little hematite rather than black? Because it's already a mica clay. We've got a little hematite in, and then maybe the rest of this alizarin. Might as well, it's right here. Another little batch of blue. Maybe we'll add that in. Okay, I'm gonna mix that in. So I'm just going until I'm happy, and eventually I'll just mix these guys in, but normally I wouldn't keep them out. Um, but just to kind of see if we can see the difference. You know, and I am doing a big batch of clay here, a whole pack, a whole two ounce pack, because I don't want to mix it again, and I want to make two bowls. So I want to make sure I have enough of this color, because I don't want to have to remix it after, because I'm not like using any precise measurements. I'm just making little balls and adding them in. And plus, it's almost the same as it was when I first started, so it's still going to be pretty much Cernet Copper. Okay. That's my last one. So one to the final one. You see how it's just deepened? I think I'm happy with that. I think that will give me enough contrast. So there's one, two, three, and four. Yeah, I like that. I'm pretty happy with that. I could go a little deeper, but I think I don't want it to be crazy dark, so I'll just mix these in with this batch, and um, that will be my clay. And so all I'm going to be sitting here doing while I watch my show, first I'm going to roll this, let me get this all mixed together, and I'm going to roll this out on probably a setting 2 on my Atlas um, 150 wellness, so I'll probably roll it out on a setting 2 because I don't like rolling up this really thick stuff. Um, two or three. So let me do that. So all we're going to do is make the sheet like we would make a mica shift sheet. So we're just going to keep folding and rolling it through. Okay, so I'm going to roll the fold first right now. And then again, I'm going to fold it and roll it through and I want to get all the particles laying flat just like you would have a sheet and then you would roll like a core roller put a stencil on where all of it looks one tone you're not seeing you're not seeing this this waviness okay so I'm going to keep running this through folding it flat until it's all kind of like a mica shift like you would get it ready for a mica shift because that's what we're ultimately going to be doing so see how all these lines are going away I mean you're going to have a few and that's fine but you want to try to get rid of as many as possible and then once it's fairly good I'm going to run it through probably on a setting three Just to thin it out a little bit so now we don't have a lot of that variation maybe a little bit on the end here but it's fine so all I'm gonna be sitting here doing while I'm watching my show is ripping off little pieces and rolling them up into balls and I try to I'm very I have a hard time rolling different size balls I found as I've been doing this I tend to stick with one size and so I really have to force myself to do bigger ones smaller ones bigger ones but they're all fairly small and you'll have to play with this to see what you personally like. If you like them um, when the way they look when they're bigger or if you like the way they look when they're smaller. Um, again, that's just going to be kind of personal preference. So all I'm going to do is just rip these pieces off and roll them into a ball. And when I have a big enough stack here, there's no rhyme or reason in how I'm doing this. 
I don't know if Kaliana has or Day has a rhyme or reason, and if she does, she she will surely tell me. I'm sure. Um, at first, I was like, oh, maybe I just have to get the mica shift on the outside. So I kind of folded it all in and got it as smooth as I could possibly get it so I couldn't see any mica shift. And then I was like, well, screw that. I ain't going to sit there. And so then I just got to ball them up. They don't need to be perfect circles. Just going to roll and ball and throw them down. Roll, ball, throw it down. Now, I do want to try other colors on this. I want to keep playing with the other colors of micas, you know, but some micas are going to have to be modified for sure. Now, go ahead and watch her tutorial again because um, on her faux one on her how to make a, um, I have to actually check the title for sure, but how to make a polymer clay box without leaving the vessel inside. And then also her faux burl, burlwood. Um, technique because this is where I'm getting this from I'm just kind of doing one a more simplified version of her box that she created because um, she did a beautiful inlay and two I'm kind of taking hers and kind of doing it as not my own but I'm kind of modifying her technique a little bit she gets very precise and because she, I mean she creates some beautiful effects don't get me wrong but in her measurements of color so like in her gold she had like an exact measurement of what to add for alizarin and the ultramarine, ultramarine blue to get the best shade she could find. And she definitely does a lot of trial and errors off camera. So that way she comes to you with the best try she can. Whereas most of my videos are my first try. Like this is the first time I've used this color. <laughs> so I don't do a lot of trial and errors off camera. Sorry guys, I just don't. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to show it the first time I do it because I will probably make two boxes out of this and then I probably will never make it at least until maybe next Christmas <laughs> um, just because I don't make tons of them I'm having a hard time deciding which ones to give away for Christmas I'm like I love the gold ones and I also love the silver ones and I honestly will probably love these two <laughs> so I'm having a hard time deciding on what what to give away and you see I'm even rolling up like little dinky ones if that's what I end up with that's what I end up with my finger is going to be pink so I'm just going to sit here while my show's on and roll up a bunch and bunch of balls and then we'll condense them all together and when that's done I will be back I mean I probably won't do this whole sheet because that will take me a while. So I'll, I'll do it until I have like a nice little square once it's condensed. A nice little pile here. Because it doesn't matter how many, how big my batch of this is. It really doesn't. I've made small little batches. I mean, as long as the color tone's the same and we're taking it from the same thing, it doesn't matter when you actually make the balls. So whenever you don't really feel like crafting but you kind of want to craft like I do right now, I don't want to do anything that, I want to keep my hands busy, but I don't want to do anything that's really taking a lot of concentration tonight because I'm super exhausted. Um, yesterday was my day off, but I did a lot of running around yesterday. I had my yearly, sorry guys if there's any guys out there watching, I had my yearly checkup and I have a, a lump in my breast, which I've known about for a few months but it's movable but it's different so my yearly my doctor said it's probably she thinks it's either a lipoma or a cyst but she's sending me to get my first ultrasound and mammogram so I'm getting that done today is Wednesday I'm gonna get that done on Tuesday next week um, that way we're just sure it's not any, I mean I'm only 31 and it's not hard I mean, it's, it's firm, but not like a pea, you know, like a hard rock in there. Um, and like I said, it, it moves, but it's different than it used to be for sure. It's probably like this big. And it doesn't stick out or anything, but I can feel it. So that way, she said later, if it bugs me, I can have it removed. And she already knows what it is. You know, if it does start to grow or get sore or something, she can 
She's like, oh, I'll know if it's a cyst or I'll know if it's a lipoma, just that fatty mass of tissue. She's like, and then we'll also know if it's anything we need to worry about or check more often, too. So I did that yesterday. I ran to the art store yesterday and got a glass bowl for this project and saw my mama for a little bit and visited with her for a little while. And then today I worked. And for some reason I'm exhausted. <laughs> but anyways, after all that personal info, I will be back. <laughs> okay, so now I have a pretty big batch done. And I've just had a paper towel here that I've just been wiping my fingers off here and there because they get a little sticky and the balls want to stick to them. So that's my little pile. This is what I still have left, but that's all I'm going to do for tonight. And all we need to do now is just condense it down so it sticks together in one kind of block. So ultimately, let me just kind of scooch them all together here. We're not trying to squish this too much because we don't want to disrupt anything too much, but we need to get all the air out and stuff, just like as if it was a cane. So I've been starting by flattening the top, just to kind of squish it, and then you can use an acrylic block, whatever works better for you. I've just been using my hands just to get it like all in a ball, like a mass here. And then I just begin squishing it. Okay, now we're looking for what's on the inside, not on the outside. Now I did use the outside pieces for the bases and I'll show you that later, the l different look of it. Unfortunately, I don't see a way, unless you made this really skinny to repeat that pattern tons, but don't get rid of the outside. So. This is the outside of my silver, and this is the inside. And the pattern looks different on too. Um, let me see if I can grab one of my done ones. So this one here, and I'll show you um, when we do this, if you stretch out your veneer a little bit more, it's gonna give you kind of something like this. Just a little bit, because you don't wanna get rid of your mica shift. And then this one is where I didn't stretch out the pattern. So it's a finer, so this one's stretched out. This one's not stretched out. I know they're shining a lot, which is good because it's my sanding. I haven't painted the inside of this. I sh <laughs> What I did was I made an inside because I ran out of scrap clay. So I made an inside silver and I made an inside gold. And then I put the wrong veneer on each one. <laughs> Dummy. <laughs> so with these, I just use brown scrap clays and I just used acrylic on the inside. And as you guys know, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for character. I'm looking for something fun. Um, with a lot of my life and what I do in my profession and in a lot of my other crafts, I'm very type A. You know, when I do cross stitch or oil painting, I want everything to be exact. Um, same with knitting. I want each stitch to be the same tightness. But for some reason with polymer clay, I don't feel that way. I feel like I can be free. So um, in both of these, I stretch the patterns out more. In these two, now this one's not sanded. Can you, isn't that crazy how much sanded and unsanded really brings out the shift? Isn't that insane? So on this one, see how small it is? Where on this one, it's a lot wider. So again, when we do that later, same with this one. So see how small each of these little pieces are? Whereas on this one, each, the circles have been stretched out. So that's also, I kind of like it stretched out actually a little bit more myself. And I still have to sand this one. I can show you the difference when I'm done that. But, oh yeah, I was showing you the bottom. So this is the outside. This is when I cut the slab off, this is the outside and it looks different from the pattern. I also made a boo-boo and I used the outside, right? So if I cut a piece of this off, this is the outside, but the inside, so I laid it on my veneer in my sheet, which I'll show you later, and I put it face up. So I have an area that looks different <laughs> than the rest of it, but hey, it gives a character. So this is what the outside looks like which is also neat, but I don't see a way that we're gonna be able to get tons of that unless you keep rolling balls. And man, I started at like 
and it's 1017 and this is I got like a one inch by one inch square so it it definitely takes a while it's not hard it just takes a while and you can totally zone out on anything else you know but it, it definitely takes a while to roll enough of these balls but this will probably give me enough for at least the bottom maybe a couple of the top we'll see of one bowl so I'm just condensing it enough to get all the air out and now I'm not gonna ah, I really want to cut it but I'm not gonna cut it but I really want to I should really let it rest but maybe I'll cut one thin little slice off to see if I can at least see what it looks like because it really should rest Yeah, I think that's going to work. Let me see what will happen if I... Now, let me see what I ha will happen. And we're going to go through this later if I stretch it out just a hair. And obviously, I didn't seam these together nicely. I just wanted to see it. Yeah, I think that's going to be enough for me. It's all about the shimmer and the light. And see, this is the other side, which I really like it. Let me see if I run this through the machine. And stretch that out. So that's, this is the outside. This is the inside pattern that we'll have. Which I think will actually be really nice. Especially once I let that rest. Because that was definitely not a perfect cut, but I didn't want to waste a lot of it. So I'll be cutting slices down like this. I'm fine with this edge, this edge, but it's this full face. And I'm going to keep this piece for my base, for sure. Why get rid of it? I did all that work rolling those balls. Why get rid of it? Okay. So that's what you need to do as far as creating your veneer for these bowls. And again, I'm not perfect. I don't really care if my seams are all perfect, which is why this design works great for me because it's okay if you have a little seamage. Like here's a seam right here and I just threw some dots on top of it so it kind of like didn't dry your eye to it. You know, I just put some small little pieces of clay on top of it. Here's another seam here. And again, I put some small pieces on top of it. So I can find the seams, but when you're looking, this is another seam, but when you're kind of looking at it as a whole, they don't stand out that crazy. And it's okay if there's a line. Again here, um, here's a seam. You can see I'm really left brain. I'm very straightforward and analytical. I put three pretty evenly spaced. <laughs> Here's another seam. I mean, they're very flat. You can't feel them now, but some people would want them. There's another seam. Some people would want them perfectly smooth to where you can't or not visible. I don't mind that. I think it gives it character. It is homemade. If you want something machine made, go buy it from a factory. This is homemade. So, oh, can I show you something? Maybe I'll show you later, but no, let me show you now. So, Kaliana and um, one of our mutual friends, Judy, she showed me this foot sander thing that works really well for polishing. But this is a lot of sanding and polishing, right? And this thing doesn't have a lot of torque. It works well for the high grits, but if I turn it on, oh, it's not plugged in. It doesn't have a lot of torque. So, my next thought was, well, can I find something like industrial? <laughs> so, with this one, I just use this one. These ones I, I sanded buffed by hand. These ones here, which I think look really good for by hand. This one, I sand and buffed, and it's actually about the same. I sanded and buffed with this that I just got the other day. Booyah. It's a skill. Um, and if, if someone really wants it, I can 
post this on my Amazon ambassador, so please let me know. It's a skill micro sander. Um, I did have to order some special pad, some like finer grit pads for it. Um, I can only find up to 3,000 right now, 3,000 grit, which then I can polish the rest by hand or with that little foot sander, um, which again, I could put on my Amazon as well. So this, if I turn it on, oh, it's unplugged too. Oh God, I unplugged everything. <laughs> I didn't want to blow my circuit. circuit. I'll show you this later. Um, but this has um, sanding pads that are Velcro that stick right on. And that's what I've been using to do this. And I got this detailing one because I think I could actually use it for pendants here. So, you know, it is a little big. It's not crazy big. I think this is like five inches, they said. Um, they do make bigger ones, but, and it's really hard to wet sand with this, but it did make my hands not hurt. So, throwing that out there. And I'll show you later when we sand. I'll show you how this thing works. What I would do by hand or what I would do with that little foot sander. And I think I kept the package for that little foot sander thing, but I'll also put it on my Amazon ambassador page. Okay, so tomorrow what I'm going to do is start showing you how to build the bowl itself without leaving anything on the inside. Um, this is all full true polymer clay right now, and I've reused the jar four times so far, the same thing. So I will uh, show you how to do that so we can have something to apply our veneer to.